Mushrooms. These little guys are neither plant nor animal and bizarrely are more closely related to humans than to the common house plant. How good is this, mate? It's a little bit spooky with all this fog. What's going on? It is, it is. So we're at a 90% humidity controlled shipping container. Yeah. Where we've got multiple species of mushrooms growing day and night. Zach grows a whole universe of these fungi in two shipping containers south of Melbourne, supplying restaurants across the city. OK, how many different species are in here? So we've got about four species in here. OK. What you've got there is a, is a white oyster mushroom. How long till that's ready to go? So that's in about 80% ready. Now, mushrooms double in size every 24 hours. So they double in 24 hours? That's right. All right, so what's the deal with the lights on? I would have imagined that it would have to be dark. Lights for these types of mushrooms are, are ideal. Not 24 hours, they also need time off, like us humans. They essentially will release spores and be active in other ways according to when the lights are on and off. Yep. So if we are harvesting at the same time, they all sort of do things to release their spores before we harvest them. To protect so, themselves. That's right. Zach, how many yields do you get from just one bag like this? Yeah, so you can get up to two or three flushes, but we focus on one good first flush and then recycle with Start a new again. bag. The process of growing the mushrooms start with a substrate of fibre pellets that are put into bags and then pressure cooked to kill any bacteria. Spores of the mushrooms are then added and the bags are placed into a dark room for a fortnight to incubate before being transferred into the containers to grow. And once they've grown into these beauties, it's time to eat them. Zach, I'm so excited to cook your mushrooms, but before I get into it, can you run through what each of these are? For sure, for sure. So we've got chestnut mushroom at the front there. Yep. It's got a very orangey texture and, and look to it. We've got the famous lion's mane there. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot about lion's mane at the moment. Known for its health benefits. We've got the king oyster at the back there. And then at the front, we've got blue oyster. Mate, they look incredible. I'm gonna start cooking so that we've got something to eat. But I wanna know, what got you into mushrooms? What began your journey? So essentially, chefs are so passionate about mushrooms. Yes. And there's a lack of accessibility to locally grown gourmet mushrooms. Gourmet mushrooms, they've got such an amazing glamour look about them and the flavours next level. They're really good for you and we just find that in today's day and age, mushrooms are the next best thing for an alternative source of protein that is not related at all to any meat products or anything like that. Slicing through these beauties is like swimming through butter, which is what I'm going to cook them in. Nothing tastes better. Now, with mushrooms, I believe they should remain a hero, right? So you'll notice rather than dicing them up into heaps of little pieces, I believe that they should remain, I guess, in yeah. that beautiful true form that we yeah. know them. Are you with me? I'm 100% with you. Mushrooms nearly deserve to be their own food group. Because of the bacteria found in this particular fungi, they create a good, healthy gut bacteria that we can't get from any other fruit or veggie. So for me, it ticks heaps of boxes. Beautiful, crispy, charred, grilled toast. I believe mushrooms, butter, extra virgin olive oil, and pesto. Oh, hello. That looks absolutely beautiful. Let's grab one each. Let's do it. All right, give it a big bite, see what we think. Mmm. <laughs> Zach, I don't know if it's my cooking or your mushrooms, but whatever it is, it is so good. It's umami. Oh, isn't it? <laughs>